Witajcie serdecznie, cześć. Zapraszam Was wszystkich do obejrzenia całości, kompletnego wywiadu z Jeffem Damerem. Ja już ten wywiad jako pierwsza publikowałam w kwietniu ubiegłego roku, zanim jeszcze Netflix wypuścił serial o Jeffie. Natomiast z wielu różnych powodów, między innymi dlatego, że był to wywiad niekompletny. Ja ten filmik jakiś czas temu usunęłam. Natomiast teraz dla Was przetłumaczona cała kompletna wersja wywiadu, w którym między innymi dowiecie się, dlaczego Jeff nie nosił okularów na procesie. Także w opisie zostawiam Wam linki do wszystkich, jakie udało mi się znaleźć dokumentów z lektorem polskim na temat Jeffa Damera. Są to dokumenty dostępne za darmo, zarówno na YouTubie, jak i na CDA. Także zapraszam do oglądania i pozdrawiam Was bardzo serdecznie. Were you molested? Never. Never. In your childhood, you have any memories of anything that you would associate with what you became? No, that's the that's the strange thing. I can't pinpoint any anything. So there was nothing in your childhood? No, no abuse, no physical abuse, no verbal abuse. It was a normal childhood in a good home. Something went awry in my thought life. Uh, I don't know why. Normal friendships in high school, but after that, I started in with the alcohol, drinking, a lot of solitary drinking, and uh, really never had any close friendships after that, after high school. Just uh, sort of lived in my own uh, thought life, fantasy world. Were you obsessed with dead animals? Is that true? I was interested in, in taxidermy in high school and experimented with... Uh, preserving the bones of dogs and things like that. And uh, whether that had anything to do with with um, the escalation of the crimes, I don't know. I started having these obsessive thoughts uh, when I was about uh, 15 and 16, and they got worse and worse. What were your fantasies about? Uh, they were sexual fantasies of control, power, uh, complete dominance. Uh, they became reality. Was there pleasure in that fantasy? There was excitement, uh, fear, pleasure all mixed together. You do sound, though, like the kind of person who could have said to himself, this is wrong, I must stop. I always knew that, that it was wrong, but uh, uh, after the, the first, the first uh, killing was not planned. I was uh, coming back from the shopping mall back in 78. I had uh, fantasies about picking up a, a hitchhiker and uh, taking him back to the house and uh, having complete control and dominance over him. What happened to you in the nine years in between that you were able to stop, that you were able to control yourself? It just wasn't an opportunity to... Uh, fully express what I wanted to, to do. There was just not the, op the physical opportunity to do it then. And uh, I started, when I moved to Milwaukee in 81, uh, I started reading pornography, going to the bookstores. Um, eventually that led to uh, frequenting the gay bars. And then I one time I brought this uh, young man back to the hotel room, the Ambassador Hotel. Uh, was just planning on drugging him and uh, spending the night with him. I had no intention of hurting him. When I woke up in the morning, he uh, had a broken rib here. I was heavily bruised. Apparently I had uh, beaten him to death with my fists. And you have no memory? I have no memory of it. But that's what started the whole spree all over again. Before you went out to pick up a man, was there any kind of ritual you went through? I'd go to the nightclubs, uh, drink, watch the, uh, the strip tea shows. And uh, if I didn't meet anyone at the bars, I'd uh, go to the bath clubs and uh, meet, meet someone there, offer them money, and we'd go back to the apartment. Um, have a few drinks, I'd have the, uh, the uh, sleeping pill mixture already prepared. 
person would drink it, fall asleep, and uh, that's when they would be strangled. When you killed these men afterwards, were you repulsed? Were you upset? No, it, at the time, uh, it, was, it was almost addictive. It was almost uh, a surge of energy. Uh, I wouldn't have to uh, worry about um, any of their needs or anything. I just had complete control of the situation. I felt so hopelessly uh, evil and perverted that, uh, that I, I actually derived a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No. No, I didn't, but uh, I had tried to overcome the thoughts, and it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. Why did you photograph them? It was my way of remembering uh, their appearance, their physical beauty. Uh, I also wanted to keep some, if I couldn't keep them there with me whole, I, at least I felt that I could keep uh, their skeletons. And uh, I even went so far as planning on uh, setting up an altar with uh, the uh, ten different uh, skulls and skeletons. And what was the purpose of the altar going to be? Uh, as a sort of uh, memorial. so bizarre and strange it's hard to describe a place where I could collect my thoughts um, and feed my obsession when the bodies were still in your apartment there was no time when you would see them and say this is grotesque what have I done there were times there were times but a compulsive obsession with uh Doing what I was doing overpowered any feelings of revulsion. I had uh, these obsessive uh, desires and, and uh, thoughts wanting to control them, to, uh, I don't know how to put it, uh, possess them permanently. And that's why you killed them. Right, right. Not because I was angry with them, not because I hated them, but because I wanted to keep them with me. And uh, as my obsession grew, uh, I was saving body parts such as uh, skulls and uh, skeletons. It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight uh, when you uh, depersonalize another person and view them as just an object, uh, an object for pleasure instead of a, a living, breathing human being. make it easier to uh, do things you shouldn't do. Never understood it. There was no use trying to fight it because I, I couldn't rid myself of it. It was it was too powerful and persistent. Do you dislike it? Yes, it's caused a lot of problems for me. A lot of conflicts and uh, unanswered questions. I was uh, branching out. That's when the cannibalism started eating of the heart and uh, the arm muscle. It was a way of uh, making me feel that uh, they were a part of me. It, it, for, at first it was just curiosity and then it became compulsive. Then I tried to uh, keep the person alive by inducing a zombie-like state. Injecting um, first a uh, dilute acid solution into their brain or uh, hot water. And uh, it never did completely work. Could someone like you be stopped? Could you be helped? No, I, I was I was dead set on, on going with this compulsion. It was the only thing that gave me any uh, any satisfaction. I kept the, uh, the mummified uh, 
head and skull of one of the victims in a, a, a carrying case in my locker at work. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. During the incident where the police were called mm -hmm. and the young boy was returned to you, that didn't wake you up at all? The police on your doorstep? They were, they were in the apartment. They were actually in the apartment, and there was a, a dead young man in the bedroom on the floor. I couldn't believe it when, uh, when it turned out that they, they, they didn't see anything. I just, I couldn't believe it. And yes, it, it did shock me, but not enough to quit. That's how strong the compulsion was. Ten of your 17 victims were black. Uh, were they racially motivated? It, it was not racially motivated. It was not a sexual preference. It was just to find an obsession with uh, the best-looking young man I could find. No one, no one had a clue as to what was happening for, for over a decade. How did you live that double life? How did you go to work? How did you have a normal relationship with your family? When you try to keep a terrible secret like I was, it, it warps every other aspect of your life. But I managed to, uh, I managed to go to work, uh, conduct myself just like anyone else would. Why was it so easy, though, for you to hide it all? I desensitized myself to it. I, I, I uh... I don't know. I went to great lengths. I, I bought security systems, uh, installed them myself in the apartment. I had a video camera in the corner of the room, uh, installed locks on the doors, uh, sirens and stuff in case anyone broke into the apartment. They said it was absolutely clean, mm -hmm. perfect. Right. How'd you hide from them? Everything was locked up, either in the freezer or in the uh, uh, file chest. And so there was no evidence laying in the, in the uh, open. There was nothing abnormal about the look of the apartment. What was the turning point for you that made you suddenly realize that you had done something terribly wrong, something you should be sorry for? It was uh, the night of the arrest. They have no memory of what happened uh, during the six hours before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment. They heard a knock on the door and the police were there uh, with, with the last victim. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. I was, my mind was in a haze. I sort of pointed to the bedroom and that's where they uh, found the pictures. And they, they yelled, cuff them. I was handcuffed. And uh, it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide, hide uh, my actions anymore. The best route was to help, help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. You were in glasses now. Right. You didn't during the trial. Why not? I, I didn't want to... I felt uncomfortable looking anyone in the face. I didn't want to uh, see anyone's face clearly. It helped me disassociate myself from what was happening. One woman in particular really got angry. What did you think when she was doing that? I couldn't blame her a bit. Uh, I'm surprised there wasn't more of that. What do you want to say to the families of the victims? I had no intention of, of hurting them. I was, I, I was extremely selfish. I was only thinking of myself, my own pleasure, my own uh, perverted desires. You know the families of the victims don't believe in your conversion or your sorrow. Oh, right. And uh, uh, if if I if I was on the on their end of the table, I wouldn't be there. Ultimately, I'm accountable uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he'll be my final judge. Can your sins be forgiven? The Lord Jesus Christ shed blood is powerful enough to, to wipe out
about even my sins. Do you ever think about your victims? Uh, I've often wondered why I haven't had uh, more more dreams or, or nightmares about what I've done. For some reason, it's like it's it's blocked off from part of my mind. If I dwelled on the subject all the time, I would uh, I wouldn't be able to function. How should you be punished? Well, there's no question that I that I deserve the death penalty. I've uh, I've wondered myself why I uh, I don't have the death penalty. Uh, that that's what I deserve. I deserve death. What do you think happens after you die? Right, that's the big unknown. I've thought of, uh, I've had thoughts of, of suicide, uh, but I just uh, haven't been able to uh, carry them through. So I don't know what the future will hold. I usually wake up at uh, 6.30 in the morning, go eat breakfast, and then uh, sleep until noon, wake up for lunch, and uh, sleep until about four o'clock in the afternoon, eat dinner, and then spend the greater portion of the night watching TV. Not to think too, too deeply about anything, because then I get depressed. Uh, I try to figure out why this happened, what, what started these thoughts in my head at such a young age, uh, whether this has any, any meaning to it, or whether this is all just a horrible coincidence, you know, all the events in my life. I feel that uh, I'm better off here than I, than, than I was on the outside doing what I was doing. You're glad you're in prison. I think it's best for everyone, right? To this day, I don't know what started it. And uh, the person to blame is sitting right across from you. That's the only person. Not uh, parents, not society, not pornography. I mean, those are just excuses. Do you still feel those same urges? Do you still feel that compulsion, that obsession? Uh, I wish I could say that uh, it just left completely, but uh, no, there are times when I still do, still do have uh, the old compulsions. If you were out on the street now, would you still be committing the crimes? Probably. If this hadn't happened, there's no doubt I probably would be. I can't think of anything that would have stopped me.